Hello, my beautiful internet friends, and welcome back. I have a treat for you guys today. So one of my favorite YouTubers is talking with us today. I have a collaboration. Her name is Brenda, and she runs a channel called God is Gray. Now, you may be thinking, Joe, don't you have some issues with the Christian church? God is Gray? Is that really the channel you're listening to? And the answer is absolutely yes. A lot of people recommended that I check her out, and I did, and I really liked a lot of what she had to say and how she presents it. So um, she actually reached out to me because people told her to do that, and I reached out to her, and so we like met in the middle. It was perfect timing, and uh, we arranged this video. So I actually have one up on her channel as well. Hop over to the link in the description and check that out. But we are gonna talk today about the big questions with God, like, you know, why? Why do bad things happen to good people? Good people, in her opinion, is questioning God okay? You know, the big, like, why me? Which I think so many people ask, whether or not you're dealing with any kind of illness, pain, losing your leg, anything like that. I think we've all kind of thought about shaking our hand at the sky and, and asking why God? And uh, that's another question that she answered. A little bit about her story and, and how she's gotten to where she is. And I think her answers are really insightful and really not something that you hear every day. I appreciate her perspective on all of this and I wanted to share it with you guys. So let's go ahead and dive in. Today I have a super special guest with me. I'm really excited to introduce you to Brenda from um, God is Gray. I found her channel actually before I started Footless Joe. Uh, I've been following her for quite a while just when I was doing trauma talk. She runs a religiously based channel, but she talks about things in a way I, I really, really appreciate, really respect and can receive. And so I wanted to bring her on today to talk to you guys about a subject that, that a lot of you guys have expressed to me that you struggle with and I definitely have as well. And that is kind of the, the overarching question of why. So Brenda, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, nice to meet all sure. of you guys watching. I, I think one of the most cliche questions probably in all of religion and Christianity is this idea of why. And I think this applies whether or not you're you're Christian or you know some other religion, but we, we often experience terrible things in life, whether that's trauma or grief or some health issue, and we think like why me? Or like, why, why is this bad thing happening to me? Like, what did I do to deserve this? And I think the question that it often comes down to is why do bad things happen to not horrible people? <laughs> and uh, I feel terrible asking you like a super cliche question, but I'm, I'm curious what your response to that is. I mean, first of all, I don't think it's stupid. Maybe it's cliche, but it's definitely not. I mean, you know. <laughs> First of all, FYI, I'm not a theologian. I'm not like out here to say that I have the answers to everything, but I am very happy to share my perspective as a Christian person. I've been Christian since I was a child, but I've been more deeply pursuing it since I was like 15. Mm -hmm. And then I came out of um, the evangelical church I was in and got very disillusioned and kind of the same thing. Like I was brought up in purity culture and I was taught to save myself from marriage. And the narrative I was given is if you're a good girl, if you save yourself from marriage, you will find your Prince Charming and you guys will live happily ever after. Yeah. So that's the kind of narrative that sets anyone up for failure. And I know it yes. was with the best intention. I know they were trying to just protect us uh, from ourselves and from our sexuality, but as you know from your own story, that causes a lot of problems. Yeah. And also, it really fundamentally is making you believe that good things happen to good people. You save yourself from marriage, you were good. The end of that is good things happen to you. So, Actually, this was the first major breaking point in me. The first time that I really delved into my faith and questioned everything because my husband admitted that he was cheating on me while we were dating and that he was faithful to me while we were married. But he was the only person I'd ever been with. So I felt so heartbroken. I didn't know anything about sex. So I just imagined every sexual experience he had was like, rolling on a beach with a million orgasm fireworks <laughs> like we're also taught sex is like the ultimate of ultimate ultimates so yes you know I had a really warped view of what that even was in his life versus you know probably him seeking and trying to figure himself out we were both really young I am not mad at him for it at all. As a matter of fact I'm grateful because it made me who I am today. It was the very first time that I was like I was a good girl and this terrible thing happened. I did everything I was supposed to do and God's 
promise didn't come through. God promised me this and it didn't happen. And in that moment, I was so disillusioned and so angry. And I broke away from the church for like a decade because I, I always tell people I never left my faith. I never stopped communicating with Christian people. I never stopped praying in prayer groups, but the church as a whole, I did separate from because I was so disillusioned with that story. And, um, at the end of the day, I realized you can't protect yourself from bad things happening because life is crazy. And this (laughs) is full of so many variables, including other people's emotion, other people's darkness, other people's childhood traumas and insecurities. And anytime you're in communion with another person, whether it be romantic, friendship, someone else in a car that's driving next to you, you're going to crash up against each other in some way. And your collected traumas and who each person is, is going to affect each other for better or worse. And you know, in life, you can have interactions with people that blow your mind, that make you feel better, that bring out the best of you and vice versa. All of that is the longest way of saying, I really started questioning this idea of being taught that if you do A, you will get B. If you are good, good will happen. Because I again and again saw the opposite. And I'm like a privileged girl you know, mm-hmm. living in America. So that's not even talking about a woman in Africa that's been mutilated sexually, you know, that is 12 years old and never did a, a never heard a fly, you know, like it's very clear that bad things happen to good people all the time. Yeah. So the way I process my faith is I don't see life as this lottery. I don't see God as uh, an ATM machine or a cancer doctor or someone that's going to immediately like heal you, um, Mm -hmm. including of your traumas or your experiences with other people. I don't think he is this thing that's supposed to be protecting us from everything. I actually think And by the way, as an aside, I believe in miracles. I believe in miraculous things happening. I believe you can pray for something beautiful and God can make it happen. But I also don't believe that's the point of faith. And even if you look at Jesus, his life was very far from perfect and good. He was homeless, like jumping from town to town, and he was eventually tortured to death for the message that he was given. So there's another example of a bad thing happening to the most good person. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And I think it is, it's about, it's more like a video game. It's about bringing yourself up to different levels, emotionally, spiritually, physically. Every trauma that occurs to you is an opportunity to either wallow in that and sit in it. And, and you should, by the way, mourning is welcome. You should mourn trauma. You should feel pain when pain happens. Yeah. I totally disagree. 100%. Yeah. I hate when Christians feel like they have to pretend everything's okay. Cause they're Christian. Another thing about good things happening to good people is oftentimes Christians end up believing that they have to pretend everything's okay all the time, mm-hmm. or they're not allowed to mourn or be sad because we're supposed to be happy and faith is supposed to bring us this ultimate joy. But I also think joy is different than happiness. Joy is like when you're joyful at the DMV getting charged thousands of dollars that you don't have, but you still feel that sense of hope and faith and life is going to be okay versus happiness, which is what I think a lot of us confuse that with. Happiness has a temporary nature, joy is more permanent and also more difficult to hold on to because life is so crazy. But every bad thing is an opportunity. Every major growth I've had in my faith with God has unfortunately not come from a positive experience, but it's come from a negative experience. And I don't think that's because God intentionally gives us bad experiences. I think it's a lot about what I said before. If you link up, with another person, you're immediately putting yourself at risk 
for whatever. You're going to bounce off mm -hmm. of, if they're an abusive person, you might suffer abuse. Mm -hmm. If they are a traumatized person, you might get pulled. I just don't see life as it's never supposed to be good. I think we're on this planet that's a disaster so that we can figure out how to reach heavenward, how we can get closer and closer to the divine. And my only goal in life isn't to have a perfect life. I would love to have money and success and a beautiful partnership and healthy babies and, you know, live till 90, whatever, and die in my sleep. Like, yeah, sure. That sounds great. <laughs> But anything that comes up against that and challenges that, the ultimate goal is by the time I am 90, and even if I do get to fall asleep peacefully in bed, that I will have become so wise and so strong and so powerful through whatever bad things have happened to me that it made it all worthwhile. Because even biblically, the afterlife is supposed to be the perfection. The afterlife is supposed to be where a good thing happens to a good person. Yeah. Planet Earth is the opposite. <laughs> Do you think, I think that leads us into to another question I addressed um, in a video not that long ago. Is there, to you, I mean, in your own story, in your own um, view of faith, is there a why for everything that happens. You know, people will often say everything happens for a reason. They often refer back to Romans 8.28, I think it is. Yeah. Um, you know, everything happens for a reason is a, is a phrase that we hear a lot. Do you think that that is true? Do you think there is some divine purpose? Well, if I'm not mistaken, I think that Romans verse doesn't say everything happens for a reason. It, it doesn't. doesn't. <laughs> but, but you're right. It's often taught that way. Yes. That everything it happens is. for a reason. But it actually says everything happens for the good of the spiritual person that everything happens for like to fortify their faith which again is actually aligned with what i'm saying which is yeah. like is if someone broke into this house right now and and did something terrible to me i would never ever ever believe that it was because God willed it to be that way because God yeah. put a spotlight on my house and drew some evil here that was going to do evil to me. Like that. I don't know why that happens except that human beings are crazy. I would blame that human being that did that. Yeah. And also, sorry for the word crazy. I don't mean crazy. I just mean no. <laughs> human beings. And I don't take offense. But... <laughs> and wild human beings yeah. are you can't predict what they're going to do. They're reacting off of their own personality and what happened to them and they're bringing it to you. So yeah. that's why a person would come into this house. Not because God was like, Brenda's going to be such and such an age and I'm going to send this terrible thing her way. Um, but what I would do out of that, if it was a survivable circumstance is that I would have to make the choice and maybe I'm using such a big example because I think oftentimes people do need a big example because people do go through really, really traumatic things in life. A lot of people do. I'd yeah. say most people have something. Yeah. Something. And really, like, life brings you a lot of challenges that you must face. And I never blame anyone for holding on to resentment or trauma or if it takes them decades to process that trauma. There should be absolutely no shame in that. Yeah. But I believe that verse is about if you are a person of faith, if you are choosing to live a spiritual way and you're choosing and desiring to draw yourself closer to the divine, that that situation can be worked out for beauty. And you are the prime example of that. Like you lost your foot. Thanks. But you are using it for beauty. You, um, are choosing warmth and graciousness and, and excitement for life. And you still have this vivaciousness and that says Thanks. so much of your character. Like not everyone has to react to a trauma like that, the way you mm -hmm. did. Like if it took someone 20 years to work through that, fine. That but, would be just, a, that would be awesome too. Like that's, yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> for, you know, the working towards goodness is you, you are, you know, choosing and you, you have enough strength, like, you know, thankful for yourself for that, but like you have enough strength to be like, I'm going to take it and share that experience with others. And 
share my voice and comfort others in their own skin. And you see that a lot. You see parents lose a child and they advocate for a bill that makes sure no other children ever get kidnapped in this certain way or like Megan's law, for example. Yeah. You see someone who's you know, spouse died of cancer and they create a huge cancer walk, you know, I think yeah. those are the moments where you see that Romans verse in action when you see the divine, because I also believe in the, the balance of, of light and dark, good and evil, like life on this planet is not imperfect balance all the time. It's not just good. It's not just light. It's dark as well. But I, I believe yeah. as a Christian, that God is always there to provide that light and to bring that light into that darkness with well, that takes human fortitude like you have your own human fortitude to do that yeah and I think that's I think that's really true um with that being said I mean I'm pretty sure I probably know the answer to this question but I'd love to hear what you have to say on it what, what do you think about um people asking why like people people being mad at God or asking why it sounds like you went through a period of <laughs> <laughs> Every last one of us. <laughs> That's like the line in the sand. That's like it for you. Yeah. Everything, like, we're cool, we can talk, but the second you start asking God why, yeah. like, <laughs> like, That's it, I'm done with you. <laughs> and call. <Like. laughs> no, the opposite. I actually think I put out a video with author Pete Enns. Um, he wrote an amazing book called How the Bible Actually Works. Okay. And if you guys want to check out that interview, it's definitely heady and it goes a lot into the history of the Bible and everything. One of the main things he talks about is giving each other as Christians or as anyone permission to ask these huge questions. Yeah. I think a lot of times, and I can only speak for the evangelical practice that I came from, there was so much pressure to know. And there was so much pressure that if you don't know, that's why something bad is happening. If you don't know, or if you're asking a question, that's yes. why you're not being faithful. It's you're doubt and doubt is sinful. And thus. Exactly. If you're lukewarm, God will spit you out of his mouth. Yes. I hate all of those things because they're just ways that we cause each other to fear and we cause ourselves to fear asking incredibly valid questions. Yeah. If you have a major health issue and you want to know why on earth God would allow something like that to happen to you, you need to ask him and you have every yeah. right to ask him as, you know, as his creation and to be shaming each other out of that or making each other fear out of that has always been so unfair to me. And yeah like Pete and I's conversation was a lot about how in the Jewish faith, it is actually celebrated. If there was like three Jewish people sitting around a table eating dinner, there is, they embrace the idea of you being like, well, I read this Bible verse and it means this. And me being like, no, it doesn't. It means, this. and then the other person's like, oh, I, I love that idea. <laughs> Excuse me, not the Bible, the Torah in this. Case. Yeah. 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 Um, but that makes me so jealous. And I want to encourage Christians to take on the exact same thing because the Bible is thousands of years old, written by multiple authors. It's ambiguous, ancient, yes. and uh, diverse, as Pete calls it. And that's exactly what it is. It's like me sitting in my living room in 2019 arrogantly reading this ancient book and being like, well, God is clear. And I know exactly what it means. It's like, like the hair flip with that. Yes. <laughs> You're like, you know, and I get a lot of people say that to me and I look at their yes. profile picture and it's like a 19 year old girl. And I'm like, okay. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> but I know where they get it. If they're not, they're not, you know, a-holes. They're no. getting that from their leadership telling them that they're supposed to know all the answers. And I would like to encourage any Christian to really acknowledge that Bible is incredibly complicated. Look up at the galaxies, at the cosmos. You really think you're not allowed to ask questions of the creator of that? That is so beautiful. And even the way Jesus spoke in parables, he never spoke clearly. People would be yeah. like, 
should I go to church? And he goes into a story about, you know, two goats. And you're just like, dude, <laughs> this man never I just wanted to know if I wanted to go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, I think even that is an example of God walked on earth in the flesh and chose to answer every single question with an ambiguous parable that people had to understand in their own time with their finite understanding. I think that goes to show right there that God is very willing for us to go on a journey for asking questions and for being as confused as hell and him not hating for us, like hating us for it. Another thing that Pete N says is, what if Jesus is humans and what if he's perfectly okay with that? <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> I think we're always so ashamed of being human beings. We're ashamed of what we've been told is our original sin. We're ashamed that the Savior had to die for us. And, yeah. you know, it's like God knew what he was getting. He's God, you know, we're trying our best. I'm trying so hard to do my best and I'm failing all the time and I'll repent for it and I'll feel conviction for it when it's necessary. But to be crawling across the floor, crying all the time and apologizing for being a human being, I don't think is doing anyone any, any favors. I, I, I heard a story. I think this was um, Donald Miller. He wrote A Blue Like Jazz. It's an, it's an older book, but I, he told a story once about... Um, he had a dog that was terrified. It was like a rescue dog. And every time he called the dog to it, it would like come crawling to him. Like it was about to be beat. And he was like, he was like, what does that say? Like, what, what, what must people think about me that the dog is like, I'm so sorry to be here. And he was like, that's, you know, kind of related that to how we think about God, that if, if, if every interaction is like, I'm so sorry, like, I'm so sorry that I exist. I'm so sorry to be here. Like, that's not, what does that say about God? Like, that's not, that's not his character. That's not actually what he wants for us. Like he wants us to be joyful and alive and here and he loves us. Right. I know. And it's so hard to wrap your brain around because God can be presented as very scary. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen to, yeah. Basically anything. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for being here and sharing a little bit about your faith and a little bit, a little bit about your journey. I, I really, really appreciate it. And I know that a lot of people will get something from that. Yeah. And just a reminder, doesn't that doesn't mean that I gave you the answer either. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you really have to seek your answers on your own. But I think not apologizing for being a human being and realizing that life was not meant to be full of happily ever afters do good, be good is a good place to start. I think, I think that's very true. And readjusting our expectations like that does very good things for us. Yeah. I will link uh, Brenda's information down below. Her YouTube channel is called God is Gray. Like I said, I found it a while ago. And um, people who watch my channel know that I have issues with faith stemming from a bit of trauma. But uh, I love, I love listening to your channel. I love listening to what you have to say because you don't beat people over the head with the Bible. And I, I really like your perspective. So uh, if you've enjoyed this, if you've enjoyed this video or anything Brenda had to say, please go check out her channel. She also has a podcast. So check her out on anywhere you can listen to a podcast. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks guys for listening. I love you guys. I'm thinking of you and I'll see you in the next video. That was so fun to be able to talk to her. Brenda, thank you again for being on my channel. Now, like I said, we also did a collaboration over on her channel, God is Gray. Uh, that is linked in the description down below. Check it out. It's a, it's a pretty personal one. Got pretty, pretty personal for me, but I love being able to do that. So hop over to her channel and, you know, subscribe to her channel if you like her content. Thanks for listening to us today. I truly appreciate it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on any of these questions and issues. I love you guys. I'm thinking of you. I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Heard from the sky